Silicon Valley Bank had been open since 1983, but it failed in less than 24 hours. How could a bank, backed by the funds of tech industry stalwarts, fail so completely? We will answer that question and more as we unpack the US banking crisis. Banks. We all love banks. They're those wonderful institutions that hold our money, mortgage our homes, and charge us an overdraft fee. You know, when the bank charges us money for not having money. But what happens when the bank itself doesn't have enough money? Well, financially inquisitive friend, that's when you have yourself a crisis. At the time of this recording, news had just broken of Silicon Valley Bank being taken over by the federal government. This couldn't be worse timing, given the failure of Silvergate Bank and Wells Fargo's recent turmoil with consumer checking accounts showing negative. Some of these events are related, some are isolated incidents, but none of them are good for the economy. But we'll get to all that later. In the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, and yeah, okay, let's start at the beginning here. Okay, so to start, Silicon Valley Bank is a bank in the San Francisco Bay Area that specializes in tech startups. The majority of SVB's customers were startup tech firms that gained funding from venture capitalists and then deposited that into SVB for equity. SVB enjoyed healthy growth over the years, particularly during the 2020 pandemic. Low interest rates and high volume really acted as the fertilizer for this growth. They saw a massive uptick in deposits in 2021. Now, the way any bank makes money is to safely hold capital and then loan it out at interest, or to invest sums of said capital into long-term securities, such as federally backed bonds. When interest rates are low, newly issued bonds pay lower returns than older bonds bonds, therefore making the older bonds more valuable. So whoever has the older bonds makes money and can then turn around and charge customers lower interest rates on deposits. And then you keep the difference as profit. This all works just fine since if a few customers need to pull their money out, banks can just sell some of the bonds to have the cash on hand for these withdrawals. The only thing that could mess up this fractional reserve banking system is if everybody took their money out right at once. And that never happens, right? R right? Picture a perfectly round snowball perched on the edge of a mountain. All of a sudden, that snowball starts to roll downhill. It's getting bigger and bigger. That snowball is the Federal Reserve raising interest rates to adjust for inflation. Rising interest rates made the newly issued bonds more attractive, lowering demand and prices for the old bonds. Normally, this is no big deal, as the bonds are for the long term. And as long as the banks hold them to maturity, no harm, no foul. Well, in high interest environments, credit becomes scarce, meaning a lot of these tech firms have to dip into their cash reserves to fund projects. And again, if the banks have enough liquidity to cover withdrawals, no harm, no foul. But see, what had happened was, this turned out to be a perfect storm for Silicon Valley Bank. They had invested 80 billion of their new deposits into long-term bonds. And since startups were the main clientele of SVB, they got hit the hardest. With every large withdrawal, they had to sell off some of their long-term bonds. On March 8th, 2023, SVB announced that they were selling off their entire long-term bonds portfolio. I mentioned Silvergate earlier. Their main source of revenue comes from the cryptocurrency market, and they were going through a very similar set of circumstances. The catalyst was the same, the Fed raising interest rates. But they had a run on its bank due to the FTX fiasco. Silvergate had to sell their assets at a loss as well. Seeing these banks going through similar panics at the same time made investors cautious. And then Silicon Valley Bank watched its stock price plummet by 60% in a single day. SVB made their announcement on March the 8th. By March 9th, customers had withdrawn, get this, over 42 billion from their accounts. They hammered the bank so hard it crashed their servers. The fact that customers couldn't get their online access to their accounts only led to more fear, and those fears were valid. See, the FDIC only insures accounts up to $250,000, which seems reasonable for most of us who, I think it's safe to say, usually have less than that in their accounts. I know I do. 
But SVB, being a tech industry bank, had 97% of its accounts at over 250,000. 97%, guys. Makes you kinda wonder who those 3% are, right? Broke losers! Wait, I'm pretty sure I just called myself a broke loser. Anyway, I digress. By March the 10th, SVB had halted trading of their stock because the price had fallen so far, all in less than 48 hours. You might be asking yourself at this point in the video, how could something like this happen? And it's a good question. With a lot of answers we are finding to be typical and ridiculous more and more these days. Digging deeper into the SVB mess, it was found out that the bank had no risk assessment officer for eight months prior to the crash. Yeah, apparently dude up and quit and no one ever got around to filling that position from April 2022 to January 23. This was at a crucial time when the books needed to be rebalanced given the interest rate hike. Oh, and it gets even better. SVB's CAO, Joseph Gentile, used to um, be the CFO over at Lehman Brothers during their collapse. Oh, this is kind of like when your favorite football team hires a coach that went 0-16 the year before and then you wonder why your team isn't any good. But uh, hey, guess what? It gets even better. If you don't at least scoff at this next fact, the very concept of irony has to be lost on you. The Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco supervises SVB. You know who was on the board of that bank? Greg Becker, CEO of Silicon Valley Bank. I just, like, you've got to be kidding me. Guys, for perspective, that's like LeBron James being on the NBA's officiating committee. Now he gets to take seven steps before anyone can call traveling. You see, allegedly, several high-ranking executives sold off millions of dollars of shares prior to the collapse of SVB. Now, we must reiterate that it is unknown if they had any previous knowledge of the impending crash of the bank. Also on the sketchy side of things is the fact that SVB paid employee bonuses hours prior to the news of the bank's failure. So it's good to hear about someone besides the CEO receiving a golden parachute, allegedly. Silicon Valley Bank, by the way, is currently being sued for fraud by its shareholders. The main thing that the financial sector and all of its customers and investors can learn is that regional banks are not as secure as we once thought. Most of these banks' customers are small to medium businesses, and if enough of these customers withdraw their cash from their accounts, we can see another panic like the one we're examining today. The rest of the banking system seems largely unaffected by this banking crisis. In fact, the larger banks might get bigger, as customers of the failed banks could take their business over to them. The regional banks saw their assets become seemingly worthless overnight, but that wasn't the case. The assets were bonds backed by the US Treasury, and had they held them to term, everything would have been fine. The problem lies in there being a run on the bank, and then the bank selling assets to cover liquidity, thus causing a panic. Big banks are way more diversified than regional banks, so they're not shocked by large quantities of withdrawals so easily. The industry that will feel the burden of this crash the most is tech companies. SVB held over 50% of tech companies' deposits, and 97% of them had accounts in excess of the 250,000 insured by the FDIC. Roku, Roblox, Vimeo, Etsy, and Vox are among the companies affected by this crash. This could be devastating to startups. Even President Joe Biden had to address the public to reassure investors that the banking system was strong. Silicon Valley Bank is now under the control of the federal government. The FDIC has moved SVB deposits to a newly formed holding bank, and to stave off a future bank failures, the Fed has instituted a failsafe. Banks can now sell their long-term bonds to the federal government without a loss. The Treasury has also said that everyone affected by this collapse will be made whole without using taxpayer dollars. In 2008, after the last financial collapse, the Dodd-Frank Act was signed into law to help curtail risk-taking financial activities that led to the crisis. Almost five years ago to the day on March 14th, 2018, the Economic Growth, Regulatory Relief and Consumer Protection Act exempted banks with less than $250 billion in assets from the Dodd-Frank Act, allowing what happened with Silicon Valley Bank, Silvergate and other banks to occur. What's next for the US economy? Only time will tell. 
Hey, thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and turn that notification bell on to keep up with all the richest content. Whether your money's in a savings account, a credit union, or under the mattress, the richest will keep bringing you ways to spend it.